Let's get started. Now, the Minister of State in charge of national security says that those hooded, heavily armed men who unleashed violence at the Baolishi um, during the by-election are on a mission to find and defuse what he calls undesirable things and will continue until they find these things. He says the men were dispatched by the National Security Council following intelligence about the movement of that substance. Here's Brian Achampo. Because it's under active investigation, what the information we have goes beyond um, the by-election that we just witnessed. It's a massive operation of uh, movement of certain things that is undesirable to, to the public. Okay. And um, it's something that the operation or the, the information that we have, what we are tracking, has not ended. I mean, as we speak now, uh, our men are actively uh, engaged in unraveling uh, the thing that we suspect it is. So it is not, it has not ended. When it ends and we, we deem it fit to let apprise the public of that information, we will. Brian Achampong speaking on Newsfile this weekend. Meanwhile, former President John Dramani Mahama has warned the opposition NDC will not tolerate the use of such force to intimidate its members. Now, he spoke on his campaign trail in the Volta region. This is what happened in Ayahuasca West Wogan. And what was pitiful was that these were armed people, our Ghana police services, they don't know. And yet, at Ayahuasca West Wogan, the guys were running rampage. Our police service could not control them. They were rather giving orders to our people. In elections, the principal responsibility of security in any election, Ghana is the IGB. It's not invisible forces, it's not Delta forces. In any case, go and read the Constitution. The duty of the National Security Council is not to control a force. They coordinate the existing security services. They are not supposed to have hoodlums dressed in police uniforms, using police vehicles, and firing bullets at our innocent civilians. All those people they shot were unarmed. They were not holding anything. And yet they discharge weapons and eight people today have received gunshot wounds. And when you talk, it is rather me they are accusing. Because I said, if they continue what they are doing, we'll be forced to defend ourselves. And then they say, I should come and apologize. update on that as we review the newspapers. Now let's take you to the Upper West region where the lack of classrooms and teaching aids have forced authorities of the Chekle T.I. Amadia Primary School to use share butter processing centers as uh, classrooms and students in the Upper Primary learn under trees currently. Though the school was adopted back in 2016 by government, the primary school is yet to receive the capitation grant 
Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafik Salim now reports from Chigli. Chigli T.I. Ahmadiyya Primary School first started as a kindergarten. It now has 80 pupils. However, since its inception, it has been bedeviled with lots of challenges, ranging from lack of proper classrooms and teaching materials. The lack of classrooms has forced authorities to turn to a privacy and better processing center for use as classrooms. It appears now they are overstaying their welcome as the owner of the Shea Butter Processing Center is asking the pupils to vacate the premises. Ahmed Salim Mohammed Alpha is the head teacher of the school. We consider our school more or less like a, a school under trees. Because almost all the classes is outside under the trees. At times, we will be in classes and we will experience uh, snakes in our mix sometimes falling from the trees and then textbooks but the initiative that we have taken is we sometimes we make photocopies of the textbooks for the children uh, which is uh, taken care by the PTA. Concerned about the plight of the pupils, government in 2016 through the Ghana Education Trust Fund, Get Fund, awarded contract for the construction of a section classroom block with ancillary facilities for the school. Construction of the building has however stalled for close to three years. Assembly member for Query Electoral Area, Anga de Sa Solomon, is excited about resumption of work by the contractor. Today we are happy the contractor is back to size. As we, we, you can see, there is work ongoing, and we are hoping that very soon we have a, a, a station classroom block and the school will be in full earnest. Though the school has been absorbed by the government, it is still yet to receive the capitation grant. The situation has therefore parents and teachers to fill in the void. We had a school feeding program to not long ago, and we are still begging and then what? Action and then requesting the municipality to include the primary school to the capitation grant too. But this is a school which is operating without a capitation grant. We only depend on parents, we depend on parents largely, and sometimes donations from what? The staff, in order to help in educating our future leaders. Another issue which is of concern is inadequate furniture for the school. Authorities were on the verge of asking parents of the pupils to take up that responsibility. They were, however, bailed out by indigents of the Upper West Region based in the United States of America, Goa. They presented 26 dual decks to the school valued at 3,351 Ghana cities. Nesuru Sedu presented the furniture to the school on behalf of Goa. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam, Perry. Rafik Salam there. Now, in the central region, the National Leprosy Elimination Program is bemoaning the continuous stigmatization and neglect of people who have been cured of their leprosy. Now, according to them, the discrimination against such people, even after they've been treated, makes many cured persons extremely challenged and vulnerable. Speaking at this year's World Leprosy Day celebration, Specialists at the National Referral Center for Leprosy at Ankafol in Cape Coast, Dr. Benedict Okukwau, called on the Ghanaian society to see leprosy as any other disease and help support such persons. Richard Kwejunyakun was there and has this. No one is born a leper. And just like we don't prefer to cure malaria patients as cured malaria patients, but we see them as normal people, when we label human beings who have been cured of a disease with that disease, it opens the door for stigmatization. Specialists at the National Referral Center for Leprosy at Ankafu in Cape Coast, Dr. Benedict Okokwao, bemoaning how people that have been treated of leprosy 
are stigmatized on a daily basis in the country. And even for us, some of us in the, uh, in, in the area of trying to help these people, we end up adding to the stigma by labeling them. It is something we shouldn't do. Even call someone a disabled person. You can't call that person a disabled person. It's a person who has challenges, who has maybe deformities. Never a disabled person. Never a leper. No one is born a leper. The last Sunday of January every year is set aside to raise awareness about the leprosy diseases, to call for more action to combat it. On this occasion, old patients and new ones were brought together to fraternize and share experiences. Jackson Kufinyako is a WHO panel member for Africa on leprosy. His lamentations were quite revealing. They are shunned by people even after they've been treated. Uh, some of them are like uh, leper. No one is leper. Those people that you see have been cured for so many years. So they are no more lepers. You have to call them by their names. We ha My name is Kofi Nyako. Somebody's name is Bafe Kuma. So we have to call them by their names. Nobody is born by these diseases. If someone is having diabetes, we don't call the person diabetes. Yeah, so we, should, we have to call them by their names. For Ghana, we are almost like him, those in Europe. Because I've been traveling all over the world. If you compare India, Brazil, Indonesia, and Nepal, it means with Ghana, we are far, far, far ahead. PCS team focus on how to end discrimination, stigmatization, and prejudice. Richard Kwejo Joy News, Cape Coast. In the eastern region, residents of the town of Etiwa have organized a photo exhibition showcasing the beauty of the Etiwa forest and its fate if government goes ahead to mine bauxite there. Adapt Secure Etiwa for Wellbeing and Prosperity Beyond Today. The event is the first of its kind by the residents who do not believe in government's plans to mine bauxite in the Etiwa forest. Government believes the sino hydro butter arrangement between Ghana and China to mine bauxite in the Etiwa forest will help bridge the country and its infrastructural gap. But the residents also believe there's trouble on the horizon. Joshua Smith has more in the following report. The residents exhibited various photos showing the fauna and flora of the Atiwa forests, the beautiful monkeys, the rare fish species and the trees, the streams and rivers running through the thick forests. And around the hall were lots of people from the community, school children and other individuals supporting the drive to stop plans to mine in the forest reserve. One after the other, the campaigners addressed the crowd. We can also use this number to determine several other pressures. Pressures from natural resources, natural sources, or anthropogenic sources, which may lead to threat of extinctions. By whatever means, extinctions must be avoided because the contributions by the species or any of them to human well-being may not have been studied and properly understood. After two days of deliberations, there was a consensus to the effect that considering the strategic nature of the Atiwa rainforest through provision of life-dependent ecosystem services, the forest should be upgraded to a national park status for higher protection. The Netherlands ambassador to Ghana, Cecilia Wages, said her country is committed to helping Ghana sustain and preserve the Etiwa forest. As a development partner in Ghana, the Netherlands and the MSC is providing long-term support for sustainable economic development. In our view, a part and parcel of this is support for enhancing natural resources in a green and sustainable manner. Under this WASH program, the Embassy also supported advocacy on the preservation of the Atiwa Forest to make it a national park. We all know how important Atiwa Forest is for the people of Ghana, providing a reliable water source to over 5 million Ghanaians for domestic, industrial and agricultural use. 
a member of the Parliamentary Committee on the Environment, Ebenezer Telabi, had some views to share on the campaign. We need to strike an average between uh, mining bauxite from a Tiwa forest and the other benefits. And uh, I am happy to hear from uh, the discussion that went on this afternoon that some analysis have been done. It favors upgrading the place to a national park economically than just mining bauxite from the forest. Why? I believe, and I have been advocating for a, a coordinated kind of uh, development with science, technology at the center of every activity without necessarily damaging or destroying our ecosystem. The Etiwa Forest, a contest of ideas on cash for a country and the need to preserve nature. Joshua Smith's report for Joy News. Now before we go, it was yet another crowd puller as thousands joined the Love FM Health Walk to promote physical fitness. Now this two-hour exercise from the Kumasi Mall through the major streets in the city recorded some of the biggest participation for a single event in recent times. <laughs> For a moment, any casual observer would take them for soccer fans filling out the Babayara Sports Stadium after a typical Asante Kotoko match. Then suddenly, they remember is the Lava Firm Health Walk, the first edition for 2019, christened Walk with a Family. From Kumasi City Mall through Asoka West, Ishaeso, Edum, Asim, Amekum, and back to the mall at Asoka, the melon crowd went beyond hundreds into thousands. Corporate Kumasi, the military, and other security services, schools, KIFIT, and social clubs were heavily represented alongside individuals. The fun and excitement that came with the physical activity sent passionate participants into frenzy as JAMA and brass band groups provided the tonic. There was hardly space for the aerobic session as vehicles had taken over the huge space at the mall. It was a nice walk. I really did enjoy it. And then, and the most funniest part is I had to meet um, a guy who is disabled, okay? And this guy started the walk with us. I tried putting him off as in, I realized he was tired, okay? Because you realize even we, the able, we were tired and we, we felt like quitting. But the guy was like, no, I'm not quitting. I'm going with you. Well, I've always been part of the Love FM Fitness Work. I've never missed any of their editions. And it has always been great, but this one in particular has been so fantastic. I mean, looking at people, their enthusiasm, and looking at the crowd, I'm so impressed. I'm so, so, so impressed. And people are really willing to stress down the stress. And you see people, I mean, jogging, those you, you, you least expected them to be able to, I mean, jog, they are doing it. And everybody is really participating, and it's really, really fantastic. I'm Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. Oh, that's good. Fiscal health is um, what is also critical and important for everybody. That's right. And that's all for the news. Up next, of course, is the newspaper review, which means the consolidated four coming back together. China <laughs> B and Mama B will be joining us. Ro, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. We'll look at all the front and back pages of the newspapers, and we'll look at myjoonline.com too, if there's time. Stay with us.